Thank you very much, and thanks for the invitation. Feel free to ask questions during the talk. So people are in different time zones here. It's uh, I've been awake for a while. It's three o'clock here. <laughs> you know, so, so I'm going to talk about this relative club L structure, and uh, it's going to be kind of a lot of algebra, a lot of uh, bookkeeping for keeping track of these algebraic notions. So I don't know. Maybe you should beg your partner for that, or maybe maybe hopefully it could be interesting too. Anyway, there, there is some geometry behind, of course. That's why I'm interested in this. And uh, what, what this, what I find interesting is that it combines kind of a fairly new, let me show the abstract, even if I'm not going to read it, but it, it combines some kind of old, uh, by now, things in, in the genre invariants that, that has kind of reappeared in the modern homological algebra in the form of some kind of abstract abstract uh, structure. Anyway, that is what we will try to get acquainted with today. So, so I'm going to jump to the main result kind of in the beginning immediately, and then I will try to talk a bit more about uh, the background here, some things about base loop spaces, which will be important. And these algebraic structures come from geometry, of course, and that's also the case for these modern algebraic uh, inventions like relative club L structures, of course, they're very geometrically motivated. So there's no kind of um, there's no coincidence that they also appear here, for instance. But there, there's some some older notion called an absolute club L structure that's also relevant here. And then some Legendrian invariants that you need to get acquainted with to, to fully understand this. Uh, this is co from contact uh, geometry then, and it's this is Shikhanov Lyashkri algebra. I will have to recall some parts of that. And then I'm going to kind of prove prove the, the statement by, by, by uh, kind of going back to this older version of uh, this phenomenon, which is called Sabloff duality. Maybe Josh Sabloff is among us. I don't know. He said that he might join. Uh, hi, Josh, in that case. Anyway, so, so that's uh, the, the, the way I'm going to present this building on some kind of uh, thing that's a bit simpler to phrase, maybe, but less general. But, but it's actually, in, in the end, more or less the same thing. And then I realized that I will not really have time to talk about fundamental class, but maybe I'll just show some slide there. Also, it's maybe convenient because I didn't have time to prepare that part either. <laughs> but I also, I don't have really time to talk about it. Anyway, I'll, I'll go ahead now. So, so this, this algebra takes some kind of careful bookkeeping to, to get uh, correct. So algebras here are always the DGAs, differential grade algebras, modules and bimodules or DG modules, DG bimodules, et cetera. So they're complexes, they're graded and, and so on. So yeah, I don't have time to kind of go into details here, but it works more or less like classical stuff, except there, 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 there things are chain maps and the differentials around and, and so on. So my DJs have differentials of degree minus one. So that means that the, the, the degree is decreased. Yeah. That is somehow important if you want to get the kind of conventions correct. And yeah, it, it's, it's tricky to be, to, to be uh, if you try to be careful, then it's easy to make mistakes and so on. Maybe I'll do that too, but let's see. Let's hope, hope I, I'm keeping my own conventions at least, sticking to my own conventions, but it, no, no promises. Okay, so, so a chain map, this is degree, degree K. If I don't specify the map, I just write this kind of K above it. That's some useful conventions. Um, so then, then uh, re remember that a bimodule can be considered as an A tensor A op module. So K is going to be some field that's not going to be specified, but um, it depends on the context, let's say like that. But anyway, bimodules is the same as some kind of modules over the algebra tensor itself. That's maybe shorthand mostly because I don't, my formulas will get too long if I'm going to use kind of the A tensor, the right bimodules every time. It's a kind of confusing point is that this kind of, this A tensor A op has some symmetry. So op of that is itself kind of in a non canonical way. 
a lot of canonical way, maybe, but but not 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 uh, just identity. Anyways, so left and right bimodules make sense, but, but it's a bit difficult to distinguish them. So there's a lot of orders and stuff that left and right in many different places that comes around them. It, it's easy to get confused there. Anyway, so when I take a bimodal tensor product, then I consider one bimodule as a left bimodule, and then another bimodule as a right bimodule, and then I take the, the tensor product over this A E over that dj so remember when all these tensor products are written and when there when there's an e around that's, that's the kind of the bimodule tensor product and everything is also dgas and dg bimodules and so on but that, that's just something that we have to remember every time uh, yeah if you're not used to this it's uh, maybe confusing but if you're used to it it's not something difficult at all so then we have something called the inverse dualizing bimodule that is important for the classical Calabi-Yau structure and also for this relative one. And that is written M uh, kind of exclamation mark for a bimodule. And that's taking the derived home, right derived home uh, from M to this AE. And, and, and this one is, is kind of, should be considered as a rank one free bimodule. Uh, and it's the bimodule, bimodule morphisms. Just to just to emphasize what I just said. So so, so this is somehow some kind of duo, of course. If, if A would be a field, just it would be the ordinary du dual, but it's a kind of generalized construction. Th then there's some kind of, yeah, kind of si simple things about free free uh, bimodules and gradings that if you take the dual, uh, yeah, my convention is then the usual one that you shift the grading, it becomes um, ne yeah, negative. Also observe that mo modules between, module morphisms be between between free free uh, bimodules, they they can be described with matrices as any kind of morphism between three modules, and then this kind of thing the, the, the inverse dualizing bimodules, of course, in kind of adjoint. So so there are there's an adjoint map, and and here there's some kind of you have to you have to think about this for a while, but but it, it's somehow the usual thing is a transpose. But then also there's some kind of thing when you have to, you have to reorder the factors because of this kind of left and right bimodule. Yeah, I, think, I, I, I guess it's because some left bimodule becomes a right bimodule or something like that. This will be important. So okay, so some some notation. I uh, feel free to stop me. And okay, I got did I get something? Uh, let's see. Oh uh, yes, something about he released said something about the order. I probably I get uh, left or and right wrong as usual. There, so it's thanks, uh, hero. Okay, so the main result is yeah a bit of a mouthful to phrase maybe, but um, okay. So so the geometric setting which is uh, important now is lambda is an n-dimensional genre. It lives in a boundary of some Weinstein manifold. So the Weinstein manifold is two times n plus one dimension. And W, the Weinstein manifold, will be required to be subcritical. And this is actually very important. <clears throat> and let, let, let me admit that in the proof, we have mostly so far been thinking, and I, and I should say that this is a joint work with uh, Numi Legu, who is also in Uppsala. And we have mostly been thinking about the ball so far, but but it, it's kind of te technicalities make it become a bit more difficult in in general subcritical. But anyway, it is true there as well. Okay, so we have an algebra uh, DGA A, which is the change of the base loop space of lambda, and we have a resolution of the diagonal bimodule. So A is is a bimodule, but uh, there is definitely not, it's a non-free bimodule. So 
So uh, AX acts by multiplication for left and right as a bimodule, but it's not free. Uh, AE is free. It's kind of the, you have to take two copies of E with the tensor product. Um, so, so we need to choose a resolution of that. And at this point, I will be a bit brief about that. I'm going to say so much, so much more. Then later, I will tell you about this invariant in Chicago Lyashpre algebra. So, this is a version of the Chicago Lyashpre algebra with kind of these base loop twist coefficients. And I will talk about this later. But right now, just this is a Legendrian invariant, an invariant of lambda. Uh, that one, of course, has its own diagonal bimodule. So, so this is also non non free. Uh, C A bimodule. So I need to take a resolution of that. Yeah, th that resolution I call S script, and that's a cone over something because because of this uh, this kind of sub algebra so, so it's it's an algebra over a so so there's a there's an inclusion of of this a into the chicago Lyashpre algebra somehow the coefficients even though it's not central in inclusion so anyway so so the resolution of the diagonal bimodule of a kind of lives inside the resolution of this diagonal bimodule of ca so that's uh, already a bit a mouthful, maybe, but it's okay. And and he, here somehow the the well, Jorgos. it's not the main result, but but this is the important object Jorgos. that I will talk about. Yes, I'm already lost. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, f first of all, this uh, and the symbol between the chain of the the chain loop and R is a typo, or is something that means something. Uh, a, a, is a, a is the change on the base loop space. I let, or, or, or what, sorry, what do you say? I mean, you say A equal a chain on the base loop space. Yes. And, uh, yeah. ah, okay, oh, and it's really an end. It's not a mathematical symbol. Uh, yeah, this is um, not, not a math symbol. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. It's a, it's uh, a language. And then C, C, E, A, what is that? You, I don't see it in the. Uh, 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 CEA, what? this is this is again just the, the kind of CEA is uh, just CA tensor over K, CA op. I mean, oh, okay. the thing that I said that bimodules are the same as C tensor okay, C op. Okay. Maybe. So in, the, in this diagram, yeah, I don't know what 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 part, which part you should look at to 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 kind of see this more easily. But so S is the is is the resolution here. I don't know if you see see the mouse. I think you see the mouse. So S here is the resolution of the diagonal bimodule C A, and there's some kind of inclusion that comes from the diagonal bimodule of A itself. Not 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 exactly, but but. Uh, that one tensor with C E A, which uh, is natural. I mean, this is really an inclusion of a, of, of a. So S is a cone, and this this shows you the cone structure of S basically. So at this point, it's very algebraic. At the end, it will be kind of this will be realized completely by geometry in the end by some Fleur complex. But okay, right now it looks like a lot of algebra. Um, Josh is here. So how should you think about S? Well, we should actually think about S, and but that's the punchline of the talk, that S is a part of a uh, Fleur complex with coefficients in uh, this, this, this guy here. So, so this is a kind of a, a Fleur complex, or, or well, to, to be more precise, the cone over this is a Fleur complex with CEA coefficients. That, 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 that's the that's the punchline. And then so so S so to answer the question, then this S is um well if this is a cone, this is a quotient of a Fleur complex. I mean it's a kind of part of a filtered Fleur complex. And the same for this, actually. 
but yeah, but that, that, that's skipping ahead of things a bit, but it's a good thing to say already now. Good question. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, one can start at this for a while. So, so there are kind of, yeah, look, if you look here, there's, there's one cone structure here, uh, which kind of the cone structure of S. And actually, what you see on the bottom side here, the, this the screen kind of wraps around here on, on the left, is is kind of some kind of dual of that, but shifted in the, the horizontal direction. Okay, so so I think maybe maybe, maybe this uh, inverse. Now I just rewrote this thing in a bit shorter way, so it's, it's useful to use this kind of inverse dualizing bimodal notation. So, so you see here on the top, I see the cone, uh, the, the short exact sequence that corresponds to the cone S that I just described. On the bottom, I have applied the inverse dualizing bimodal to that sh short exact sequence and shifted it. So in some sense, uh, th there's two things in this diagram. This is kind of cone structure on S and there are some vertical maps that I haven't talked about, but apparently they are morphisms uh, and then this is kind of a, a copy of the top again but you apply this in, in inverse dualizing biomodule and then shift it yeah I don't know it, it, maybe I, I will I will go on but please feel free to stop me so so the theorem then is, is that the above diagram induces a quasi morphism between distinguished triangles uh, so you have to check some commutativity as well and, and that can be rephrased as saying that this inclusion uh, a into this CA, so the kind of the coefficients, the base loop twist coefficients into CA is a relative or, or has, maybe not is, admits, um, I guess, admits, say, because I, the, the, the part of this isom the quasi isomorphism is not part of this data, but it admits a relative Calabial structure. And then, and then uh, if you look, if you look at the the way this is, uh, uh, Brad and Dickerhoff uh, defines this. Actually, their quasi morphisms go the other way, <laughs> from bottom to top. Somehow, and uh, yes, I have not thought much about why we get naturally this this way, but okay, that's something I should think about at some point. Okay, so so that so they somehow these diagrams are, yeah. So so this this diagram, moreover, if you go to this kind of see these distinguished triangles instead, then actually they're 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 commutative, or say, at least homotopy commutative squares here as well, and the vertical ones are isomorphisms. Right. Anyway, so that, so that's the main result basically, but maybe it's. Uh, yeah, it's useful then to spend the rest of the talk probably to try to kind of get familiar with these objects because that's a bit of a mouthful, as I said. But feel free to stop me already now. Uh, and also, the proof well can and and will we have I mean, it's work in progress, but it's important also to consider this when when lambda is a legendre embedding of a Weinstein skeleton. Uh, and then, well, our proof would then be kind of easy to generalize using the, the DJ per singular Legendrians with Weinstein singularities by Aspen and Ekholm, for instance, or Anbai in low dimensions. And then you can use the surgery formula to, to, to get some statement about the partial raft of category. And uh, what is the outcome? Well, so, so then I just so so if you apply this kind of machinery, then you you will get some kind of stronger statement that now lambda same dimension, but it's a Weinstein skeleton, and then you have some critical handles of this Weinstein skeleton. It's it's a self kind of yeah you you have this Weinstein hypersurface inside the boundary, and that hypersurface is a skeleton. That skeleton has some critical handles, say small lambda. Uh, again, W needs to be subcritical. Oops. This is now we see something again, right? I hope. Very good. Uh, okay, so W needs to be subcritical, but there's another Weinstein manifold around here as well. That's kind of the, the, the ribbon around lambda. 
And now A is not the base loop space of lambda. Lambda is not smooth, but, uh, but uh, A is itself a jacobian Valiashbury algebra of these uh, lambdas, uh, the, which is a link of Legendre and n minus one spheres. And maybe I'll just show you kind of exactly the same diagram again. So, so, so you should get the same kind of statement again. And uh, then in, in some sense, in some sense, it is maybe for technical reasons, it might even be preferable to use this, this kind of proof also for the also for the smooth case when lambda is smooth, because in that case you, you get you get kind of a, a semi-free model for the base loop space of lambda, which I don't know, I I prefer, but it's more technicality. Okay, but I think uh, let, let's not dwell too much on this, but say so it, it generalizes to some other more singular Legendrians. And I'll go on to the second part now. So are, are there questions, by the way? I should you will see the sequences again. Uh, so, so now just uh, going back to somehow these uh, coefficients or the DJA and the absolute cloud BL structure uh, that will hopefully enlighten you a bit. So in this, so in the, the first vertical row was this kind of uh, something about the, 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 so remember that, that we had this resolution of, of R sort of R of A, so the resolution of the diagonal bimodule. And then in the diagram, there was this uh, left leftmost um, uh, vertical arrow that said it was a quasi-morphism between you know, this resolution tensor something with C and uh, this dualizing, inverse dualizing bimodule. And that's actually, it comes from an absolute n calabial structure on the base loop space, chains of the base loop space, or also the, 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 the DJ of the uh, attaching spheres in the more general case. Oops. And, and uh, so what is the difference? May, may, if you know what an absolute calabial structure is, then this map becomes a bit demystified you should just take a tensor product with, with this kind of, you should, you should do some kind of base change in some sense, increase increase the coefficients. So the, the ordinary Calabial structure would be just from the resolution itself. So, so here you see the resolution of the diagonal bimodule and the, the ordinary Calabial structure is an equasisomorphism to the inverse dualizing bimodule shifted of R itself. But taking the tensor product just gives you kind of increases the coefficients because R doesn't have anything from C. But if I do this, I kind of in any kind of stupid way just add the coefficients from from C there as well. So so this is just coming from the Calabria structure of the coefficients in some sense. Uh, feel free to stop me. And then and then this uh, the, the fact that the the Ralph Kai category of of uh, Weinstein manifold has the club L structure was proven by Ganatra. Uh, yeah, kind of long time ago now. Uh, and also for our proof, it's important to use, uh, well, soon to appear work by uh, Legou. And that's because we're using, Ganatra uses this kind of, uh, well, th this kind of say, the standard version of the Rath Pukai category, whereas, we're using this DJ from the genre for, from SFT. And then we uh, also need to kind of use a proof of the Calabiao, or we, we need to we need to find the Calabiao structure using this SFT or formulating this SFT kind of invariant language. And uh, yeah, so that's done by Legu in this uh, work soon to appear. So which kind of, uh, well, if you combine that with the surgery formula, you get a different proof. Probably it's the same structure as Ganatra has constructed, but that I don't know. So, so anyway, so these DJs, the A DJs, the base loop space or the Chicago um, Lashbury algebra of a collection of attaching spheres, 
that has this kind of absolute Calabiao property. And that's the first, first horizontal arrow, so, sorry, first vertical arrow. And uh, so it, it explains hopefully a part of the diagram, at least if you know what this absolute Calabiao structure is. Um, <clears throat> and moreover, in, in the case when uh, the base loop space in the case of the, when lambda is smooth, so we use the, the base loop space coefficients. Then on the change of the base loop space, this Calabiao uh, structure of isomorphism is actually topological. Uh, so, so you can prove that in other ways then. So here you see some things that I will not have time to go too much into, but I will show two slides about it. Um, so here is a, it's a, another way to think about this R. So, so now, so, so lambda is smooth now, which is the case that I will consider from now on. So then A is the base loop space, change on the base loop space. And in fact, a model for this um, resolution here is kind of chains on lambda with free bimodule coefficients. Um, and the Calabiao isomorphism takes then to the inverse dualizing bimodule of this model. And that can be seen to be the, the, the co just a homology with, with of lambda with these, with these uh, inverse dualizing bimodule coefficients. So I, I will show you a concrete example of this in the case of S1. So it's going to be even more concrete. Uh, and why is there an isomorphism there? Well, this isomorphism between homology and cohomology, it's some kind of a Poincare duality for this thing. So, so people doing yeah, loop space, uh, well, string topology somehow that they would take this perspective on the Calabiao isomorphism or in the absolute one and the, so the leftmost uh, vertical arrow in this diagram. Uh, so, so point credibility. And, and then when lambda is a boundary, then this gives a relative Calabial structure. So, so there's another way to, to understand this diagram that th there's some kind of long exact sequences uh, involving point credibility when, when you have things with boundary and then somehow intertwining the some kind of relative, relative homology complexes and the point graduality of the boundary and so on. So you can probably think about it and find similarities. Okay, I'll move on and make things even more. Oh, sorry. First, uh, just to just to maybe for topologists. So so uh, to to show that this uh, chains on lambda with coefficients in in uh, uh, now I let's see here. Yes, exactly, exactly. So change with lambda uh, with coefficients in the in the well in the free bimodule of the uh, change on the base loop space. That this gives you actually just the change on the base loop space that, that can be seen by vibration. Somehow take the fiber product of the path space and the path space. You you get a uh, vibration with total space being this kind of fiber product of the path space and the path space and, and uh, fiber is loop space times loop space because well if, if you if, if you have lambda and and then you, you have some kind of you have you have a fixed base point and then two of course if you take the fiber over that base point path space times path space just gives uh, well, if they end at that point, then uh, you just have, you have a product of two loops or a pair of loops. And, and if in general, kind of you, you have two paths, the fiber consists of two paths that, that, that end at the same point in general. Uh, but that's also the same as the loop, actually. So you just take a, I mean, any loop can be, can be split into two paths. Like that, uh, and that is showing that actually this fiber product is the is the 
just a base loop space. I mean, it's just splitting any, any path. So I should draw this picture again. I have some kind of loop in my space. It starts at this base point. And then all I said is, OK, at the point, at some point, I just split this into two paths. So that's all it's saying. And then from this uh, sequence here, this vibration, you should then be able to use coefficients somehow in this fiber. OK, hopefully that's also useful. Uh, now, now let's make it even more concrete. <laughs> so let's take the torus. And that one has a nice model. Then we can actually see things very, very explicitly. And in fact, uh, a model for the change of the base loop space is just a Laurent polynomial ring of n variables. So that's that's a model for the change of the base loop space, quasi-isomorphic. So Laurent polynomial ring. So, so there's no differential. So it's formal. All elements in degree 0, that, that, that makes it actually behave like coefficients in the way we're used to. So, so this, this will help us to do some calculations, but also good for thinking about stuff, I think. And then, yeah, in this case, you can work everything out by hand. You, you see that this diagonal by module, say in the one dimensional case, it's just a commutative algebra. It's a fine. So it's actually just something that is coming from algebraic geometry. There's some kind of causal resolution of this diagonal by module very explicitly. You have this code or this map that kind of take takes so the matrix if matrix of f it's a two, two rank one by modules and the f is just a one by one matrix so, so it's uh, the t tensor one minus one tensor t that, that that's uh, that's what it is a very explicit resolution uh, so, so that you can check, kind of see see the things work. Uh, so, if you're so basically, if lambda is a torus, a lot of this thing gets simplified. Uh, and then, yes, and then, and then it can be also even more. So, this is actually useful for for the later geometric geometric um, constructions that I will use. For, from the what I said previously, there is kind of a topological topological realization of this kind of resolution. And then the homology in homological, in singular homology or something more homology maybe, that will be useful later. And therefore I will actually kind of explain it now here. So if I want to do this resolution, I can take now this complex of the circle, and then I take a Morse function, min and max, and the maximum will be t and the minimum will be e. Here, coefficients are uh, this free rank one bimodule. And now I actually took the circle and shifted it off itself like you do in Fleur theory. And the reason is that the more flow lines now get kind of, not only are there lines, they're actually strips. Of course, I don't have to do this. It's just a formal thing. But this, this flow line here uh, goes so say I take a base point somewhere, and now I will be a bit sloppy with a with a uh, with a with the capping paths and so on. But but anyway, so there are two strips. So so dt, the first one doesn't pass through through the base point. So that is spitting out one tensor one times e, but but then there is a a second one here, a second strip here, and that one gives you contribution plus minus t tensor t. And then actually the these strips go different ways here. So one is inverse, and I maybe don't think about too much about the ordering now because I'm not thinking too much about it myself. So the second one is like that. OK, so now maybe I chose some, some different uh, bases here because but you, you can multiply both sides with this invertible element t to get it on the other form there. So so, so, th so this is the 
this is the way you get the causal resolution geometrically from the Morse complex. But you see, so, so it's, it's a kind of version of Morse sphere in the circle. It has local coefficients, <clears throat> but, but it can, you, you twist kind of, you twist both sides of the, of, of the strip. That, that's important. Okay. Uh, let me move on if no one has any. But, but okay, but I emphasize this is important for understanding the full full theory because this is a this is actually part of. The, I said before that this long stack sequences or or these uh, quasi-isomorphisms, this uh, thing that is the Calabi-Yau property, is this quasi-isomorphism, and the clone of that is some Fleur complex, and this is the kind of co how how coefficients behave in that Fleur complex. So this is a part of that third complex, a topological part, you can say. Okay, uh, <clears throat> and then maybe maybe let me skip ahead to save some time here. Uh, so anyway, so, so the 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 absolute Clavial structure can be seen explicitly in this causal resolution. Of course, it's not something hard there. You just have to take the transpose and the shuffle factors of this map F to get the same complex if you dualize. Okay, and then high dimensional causal resolutions, I skip that. You have explicit models for the high dimension, dimensional tori as well, coming from the one dimensional tors. Okay, so I will speed up, up a bit now, maybe. Okay, so, so I let, let me allow myself to be brief on the contact geometry. I think that is things that people are, are familiar with. But anyway, to, to remind us just that why is the contact manifold? It has a contact form alpha that I call alpha. Y is 2n plus 1 dimensional here. And the, the rib vector field, you know it, hopefully. Stop me otherwise. And the Legendrian condition is just that it's tangent to the to the to the contact distribution everywhere. And and then the, the boundary of a level or Weinstein domain has a contact structure naturally. Uh, and Again, remember that it's a subcritical case that we we are interested in today, because otherwise this this theorem that I told you is not true. That can be checked. All right, and with the, the Darboux ball, it's uh, our most important example. One thing is that it gets old proofs become simplified, and uh, yeah, that's a good thing. Uh, and also the algebra becomes simplified because. One important thing is that in the sphere, which is the boundary of the ball, the Legendrians, you can um, you miss a point, of course, you can remove a point, and you get the contact vector space. And in this contact vector space, actually, the you can compute the invariants, and they are the same as in the sphere. So you can go to the contact vector space instead of the sphere, and this standard real vector field on the on the standard vector space. Is particularly simple, so it actually gives you finitely generated algebras and so on. So that's that's something that is useful. Okay, so, so the standard unknots. I think I will get back to these with some computation soon. So let me let me skip this. And uh, the Harvey Lawson cone is also interesting. So this uh, this kind of torus. If you want to compute something in higher high dimensional, maybe it's good to show that. <clears throat> Okay, so so the the important thing here is the chicano Lasper algebra, uh, and we want to investigate properties of the chicano Lasper algebra in some sense. That that's that's what the whole talk is about. It's about this DJ. So we have to actually specify what this DJ, what kind of version of this DJ are we considering. So, uh, well, it is a kind of a old by now theory of an invariant of a Legendre submanifold. Um, and in our version, we will need this chicano Ashby algebra to have some kind of coefficients in this base loop space. Uh, and that, that, that version is from Ekom Lekeel's more recent work. But, but before that, people consider this as simple coefficients. And then, for instance, Chicano already in O2, had the case well in in the in the R three he defined this, and then Ekomel Etnayer and Sullivan generalized it to to like contact vector, vector spaces for instance of arbitrary dimension, and then there's an SFT version of this, 
But if you read these papers, then uh, then A is not the base loop space, it's something simpler. And the original version had the kind of A equals just a ground field. And then it's freely generated by the rib chords, just. But, but here, now a very important point that if you're familiar with this theory, then it, it works a bit different, maybe. Well, it, it, it's a generalization of this, but he, you definitely want to move away a bit from this and, and make it more sophisticated in some sense. First of all, one way to do this is when, when lambda is disconnected, then actually you want this coefficients to be some semi-simple ring instead. And then it should be idempotence coming from the from the components. If you are happy to work in the connected case and then nothing happened here, then it's just, still just the K. More details a bit later. And okay, so, so here is, is a important result now. The connection between Raptor Kai categories and um, and this uh, these DJs, and that maybe more motivation is not used in the actual uh, proof of this thing. But anyway, so remember then that uh, this DJ with these coefficients is natural to consider, because if you have a union of spheres uh, embedded Legion and link of spheres, then this DJ computes the endomorphisms of the Raptor Kai category of, of the co cores that appear of the surgery on these spheres in the Raptor Kai category. So that motivates maybe why these semi simple coefficients are natural to consider. So here's a picture of that. You take W and then you attach some spheres, and uh, then you get these co core disks, and the DJ computes that. Uh, now we, we kind of take an uh, um, uh, even more sophisticated version when A is the change of the base loop space, not just some semi-simple ring. Of course, again, Lambda might have several components and then you also get these idempotents. Okay. Uh, so coefficients is tempting to say now, but, but first of all, remember that these coefficients are not central, so it's better to call it an, an A DGA, maybe. So A is the kind of there is there is a, a unital inclusion of A into this DGA. In our case, it's an inclusion. But but coefficients, it's maybe not the correct terminology because they're not central. A is not central in CA. Important properties that uh, <clears throat> this CA is uh, kind of semi-projective or co-fibrant over A. Uh, okay, now maybe maybe I move on to, to more, um, uh, let's say, concrete, maybe a concrete way to describe CA or more precise. So if you have the field that's underlying algebra, then you take this uh, DJ to be just the tensor. Well, you can say that it's, it's, the, it's the tensor algebra generated by a vector space of chords. Uh, or you can see it as some kind of non-commutative polynomial ring or tensor algebra, then this is somehow same thing. When, when it's in, in the general case, you need to take this idempotent ring of the components, uh, you need to consider that, so the base loops with is a K bimodule, it splits into the components in this uh, in in this way. Uh, a question from Roman: If W is of finite type, yes, definitely W is of finite type. That is correct. Uh, uh, I also have a question. Yes. So, um, when you talked about the coefficients uh, coming from pi zero of the Legendrian, it was kind of clear geometrically what you want them to catch. Um, mm. So what is what is the geometric data that uh, this these chains in the loop space catch? Yes, so so that uh, I, I will sketch the the the, the differential, uh, maybe, but maybe I can do it already now. So, so 
so they, they, they will count on higher dimensional. So if, you, if you're familiar with the DGA differential, it's some, some generator, rib core generator here, and then spits out a word here. But if this is not a rigid such thing, you know, the rigid moduli space, then, then these are actually varying. The boundaries are varying. So you get actually change of loops and not just. But a, a good point with the torus is that then actually it's not doesn't doesn't buy you anything more to do this. In the end, it's enough to just count rigid, rigid the, the usual things with H1 coefficients. So, uh, and it gets more technical if you want to do this with the, with the full chains of the base loop space. That, 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 that's pretty, pretty technical, actually. So that's one reason why I like the torus, that, that you actually get around with this. And then you can maybe use different models to, to actually solve the problem, but anyway, that's a good question. Uh, so is there an example of something that you can kind of that that you can detect using these coefficients but not using the other ones yes so I will detect detect uh, that, that's probably true as well I think I have some pretty yeah exotic examples but but for the kind of for the relative Calabial structure this is kind of important that if you if you would consider the sphere in high dimensions you would not get the correct thing actually and and the sphere in high dimensions, so so then somehow a of I draw a sphere in high dimensions like this. If you use the no sorry, if you use the the Ashby algebra of the sphere in high dimensions, this is just quasi-smorphic to the to the field itself. And that's not true if you use other, say, just the normal field coefficients. If you use normal field coefficients, then this is a polynomial ring in a variable A. I'm drawing very tiny spheres now on this. And this okay. A is a trip board. And actually, for the Calabiao property, that, that's somehow a good, a good point. But then this is the one, this is the one that you need to consider, actually. Mm -hmm. the, the other one. Does not give you the correct answer then. But yes, there are the, the, your question was if there are examples that are distinguished, and yes, that's that's the case actually. But I don't have such uh, I cannot draw them right now. Okay, thanks. Right. Okay, I think I will move on a bit here. Okay. So so the so the way to think about this general algebra then it's it's a bit of a problem to to form it in the in the correct way, but you take C is a kind of by so K by module of chords. And then you kind of increase the coefficients to also include the base loop space. And then you take the tensor ring over that. So anyways, so if, if you want to consider kind of the, the yeah, the, the the correct way to think about this kind of non-commutative polynomial algebra, free polynomial algebra, but generated by these chords, then that's how you have to do it. You kind of you take some k module, but but observe then that, that then uh, these chords, the C consists of chords, but 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 uh, it's not a commutative k. It is a kind of non-commutative module here because. The, the chords have some starting point and end point, and the model multiplication should respect the, this starting point and end point. So, so that's the correct way to do this. Uh, all right, and then there's a differential, and I think that I will move on to do computation instead. Oh, yeah, sorry, and I just just to, to remind you that why another reason why this is this is uh, relevant is that. Uh, that is the quasi-morphism of this DJ with the full base loop space coefficients and the partially wrapped for chi category and the morphisms of the of the linking disks. And that's uh, proven by Ekel McKilly in high dimensions and my student Martin Becke for surfaces. Um, here's a picture of that geometric picture. So, so the, the object in the in the partial ref, ref category is linking this here. 
So that's another reason why we should care about this. And that's another reason why this um, is uh, relevant, maybe, or why one would expect this relative Calabial structure. Uh, so let's go to the standard unknot. Now the base loop, so my, my examples will be tori. So, so it's, uh, anyway, so this first uh, computation we already did somehow, or you maybe you're familiar with it. So, so the standard unknot with standard coefficients in K, you just get a pol pol polynomial algebra in A. Very different if you use base loop space coefficients. Now I use the kind of this trick to go to, to the Laurent polynomial ring. And then I get D of A is one minus T because there's a base point here. And there somehow one disk is on with this side, it gives you one. The one disk here gives you T. And that can be proven to be just VJ is quasi isomorphic to K just. It's not completely obvious actually, but you can use a spectral sequence argument or something else. But okay, let me move on. Uh, hopefully I don't have time for. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, me and Romo Goloko computed. Well, the differential can be computed. Now it's a torus uh, and this torus it's now two dimensional, it's not one dimensional, two dimensional. The differential uh, you can find in, in this paper by me and Roman, and in, in unpublished work by me and Paolo Gigini, then we actually compute the full DJ, which was also not such a. Unpublished easy thing. yet, I hope. So, what? Unpublished yet, I hope. Yeah, or have yeah. you given up completely? Unpu I mean, to, to be published. <laughs> well, I don't know what I said. Anyway, so then you compute this DJ, and then this is an affine algebra, actually, the ring of regular function on the one dimensional pair of pants. So I'm ad advertising this result, but uh, anyway, it's an interesting toy example in this relative Calabiao structure as well. And I don't know why, but of course, there's some kind of duality since this is an affine one dimensional variety or the ring, regular, ring of regular function on the one dimensional variety, there's some kind of duality of its representation theory as well, coming from just the, yeah, du duality for coherent sheaves, say. And uh, yeah, I didn't think about how that is related here, but anyway, you can definitely try to understand this relative Calabial structure of this guy geometrically in terms of algebraic geometry. That's my point here. Right, so now, I go to the last part, which is the relation to Sablov's duality and the proof. So it's uh, also kind of in the in the early days of Legendre and contact homology, Sablov had this kind of concrete duality or linearized Legendre and contact homology. And I probably don't have time to actually give you the details of what this linearized is, but it's derived entirely from the DGA. Then Ekel, Metnar, and Sablov generalized this to horizontally displaceable Legendrians in more general, say, contact vector spaces. And then bourgeois Chantren generalized this to something called bilinearized Legendrian contact homology. And, uh, well, th th there's, there are many, di many different versions of this you can cook up, but, but in our case, remember that the, the version that we want when lambda is disconnected is the version that corresponds to finite dimensional representations of the Fokai category. And that's somehow why it chose these coefficients. So if you read these other papers, then maybe the disconnected case will not be treated exactly in the same way and so on. And, uh, but yeah, so there are different versions. I don't have time to go into this, but so just to say what, what, what an augmentation is in this language is, uh, so this is a chicano Eliashbury algebra this seems to be some kind of parenthesis mismatch there, but let's erase this. Uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what, she, what this should be here, but okay. So the chicago lashbury algebra with loops with coefficients, the augmentations that we could care about take values in the endomorphisms of this idempotent ring over K. So this is some kind of finite dimensional algebra. But, but it should also be, and uh, somehow homomorphism of 
KDJs. So, so it should respect that importance. Anyway, if you if you have such an augmentation, kind of if you just use this algebraic bookkeeping and read this uh, duality long exact sequence papers be, from before, then this is the duality long exact sequence or, or, or the sample of duality. So it's a long exact sequence that has homology of the base, so sorry, homology of lambda with some local coefficients, and this linearized invariant homology of that, and this linearized invariant or bilinearized invariant, the, well, the dual of that actually. And all right, so let me, since time is short here, so so let me skip a bit to the proof here. So I'm not going to I'm not going to talk about now exactly how this bilinearized is is defined. So so you, you will see in the end anyway the, the geometric version of this. I need to skip through here. Okay. So so here are two canonical short exact sequences, and, and uh, this org plus comes. I didn't have time to talk about that either, but it's another invariant that uh, is kind of an extension of org minus. You can see you see here this is a short exact sequence where org plus comes it has a cone structure and there's the kind of a, the the singular homology and this org minus inside of it. And uh, you can check the references where this was defined. So in the high dimensions, it was Ekomle Keeley. Low dimensions, it was um, many people. So uh, let me not mention all of them. <laughs> Let's check the references. I mean, it's Shende, uh, Sivek, Eng, and who else? Rutherford, I guess. <laughs> Maybe it was uh, Zasta was there as well, I think. Anyway, many people. So you have these two canonical short exact sequences. Again, one is shifted here. Uh, and I probably missed something here. No, no, exactly. This is, this is how it is. So basically, I just took the cone structure on this kind of the dual of the old plus cone, took the dual of that, and then I got this other cone down here, and then I shifted that. So it looks reminiscent of, of the structure of the relative Calabial structure, of course. There's already some kind of Poincaré duality there I wrote. Uh, and then when lambda is horizontally displaceable, something magical happens. Namely, there are quasi-isomorphisms vertically here. Uh, and in fact, the DJ itself contains all the information about this. And sorry, this is the, the wrong notation here, A, and this is C of A. So the, the DJ with the base loops with coefficients, that's another reason why to consider that, is that it, 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 it knows everything about these two sequences, except, well, it doesn't know the point duality, and it doesn't know the quasi isomorphisms there. <laughs> that, that's something extra you get. And that extra you get from the horizontally displaceable condition. And the cones of each vertical arrows are versions of the Zerbinovitz fluor complex of lambda. So if you take the cone of, of this, cone of this, then you get a Zerbinovitz fluor complex. Th then that's how it's proven actually in the, in the previous versions too. But uh, people didn't call it the Zerbinovitz fluor complex maybe. Uh, so let me then skip forward to the Rabinovitz for a complex. So this kind of LCH version was systematically considered by Legou in a recent paper. Uh, I'm not talking about any kind of algebraic structures here, but maybe one of the main points in that paper is to actually construct some algebraic uh, operations on this complex, but anyway. That's the version that we use. It's some kind of Fleur theory. We need the coefficients of this complex to be in CEA. So this rank one free by module. Uh, and the complex is taken by considering lambda, pushing it off by the negative rib flow and taking three different summands 
So it's a FLIR theory. It has generators, and the generators are uh, real chords. And namely, we have long chords from lambda 1 to lambda 0. We have short chords from lambda 1 to lambda 0. And they're just the critical points of a Morse function. And then we have uh, real chords on, uh, from lambda 0 to lambda 1. And, and uh, well, since my time is up now, so, so I'm almost done with the to, to, to phrase the punchline, but one more minute just. So corresponds to real chords. OK, let me skip that. But but the differential of this guy, let me just very so, so the so input output. So this is a D plus plus, for instance. And then there's a D from plus to minus. So reading from right to left, I guess, would be like this. And then here you have a chord from lambda one to lambda zero, lambda one to lambda zero. So here, here you spit out the chord from lambda zero to lambda one. So that's d minus plus then, for instance. So you count this, you count this type of curves. But now, now the, the coefficient in the in the in in a is the fact that you can have punctures here, and these punctures are actually kind of going down to minus infinity. And these have to be counted for, and and you don't count uh, in the in the old version of the theory. You use an augmentation in in some field to actually count these as numbers, and the coefficients here tell us just that we don't want to count these punctures as numbers. We want to just take the actual value. What what kind of chord is that going down to? That's what we're doing. Uh, okay, so so uh, that's the differential. The, the important thing is to say that I can group these kind of uh, so, so the Rabinus Fer complex here is a cone in two different ways. And I can then see this as a cone in two different ways. And I now write this as CY and CY bar. And if you remember now what we had in the beginning, that was this relative Calabial structure, and it had these kind of vertical things that were called CY and CY bar. And actually, the claim is, and now I'm going to finish here, that's that, well, first of all, remember, the leftmost one is the kind of the topological Calabial structure, absolute one. And then one can compute that the corner of these blue morphisms gives you back the Rabinovich fleur complex with its funny coefficients. So, so the cone of each of these two are just is just a Fleur complex, and the, that's somehow true on the nose, in the ball if you're very careful, and the, that's an interesting way to kind of see some algebra. That's that's the way I learn algebra anyway. So, so I, I take some geometric object that I'm familiar with, and then I kind of study it carefully, and then so you you learn to see that okay, this complex actually contains something, and it, it turns out to be resolution and so on. But, but it's a computation. And uh, OK, so now I have gone over time. So let me stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, any questions? Um, oh, there was some question already there in the chat, I think. Mm -hmm. So uh, 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 yeah, so duality and uh, Arnold Chord conjecture, yes. So of course, this long exact sequence is uh, in in the duality long exact sequence. Oops, where is that? There. So it of course gives you some information about the ranks of these complexes. Are uh, you you you? I don't know. So going to the base loop space, if you don't, if you do not use finite dimensional representations, yeah, as soon as you can use finite dimensional representations, you of course get, you you get something. Let, let me skip to to this kind of most important. Oops, sorry for going around here. Uh, 
it was too much written here. Oh, there it is. So, so of course, th this kind of sequence using the topology or to topological. Remember, this comes from topology. And the fact that this topology is related to, to the Legendre invariance generated by chords, that tells you something about the chords then. So, so these part here, this, this is kind of measures chords. Holomorphic disks. So, 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 of course, that can lead to things. But if you don't have in, finite dimensional, yeah, infinite dimensional representations, then rank is probably not the appropriate thing. But, but there are definitely, definitely things to do there. And the fundamental class, I didn't have time to, to get there, but the fundamental class comes from the fact that. Uh, so, Roma's second question is simply that. Again, the topology here, or whatever it is, if you think about this kind of thing that comes from the coefficients of the algebra, roughly speaking, as soon as there's some, some kind of canonical thing inside there, you can be interested in seeing how maybe you take this kind of one times E, for instance, that you saw in this other resolution. Uh, then you could be interested in, in mapping that into here and getting a fundamental class. Or maybe you have this kind of E shriek, and then you want to see uh, if that comes from something. You, you can try, you can try, you could try to push it back to here, for instance, or lift it to here. And those are fundamental classes, and they, they can also have, but, but I, I don't have time to go into the details of those things. But um, there are interesting applications there that have been explored before in a kind of, uh, yeah, maybe I just uh, say something about one thing. The fundamental class, important thing is that, so, 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 so Pan has a result about Coborism maps being injective on the, the, the level of kind of augmentation categories. And those things can be generalized using general formulation of the fundamental class. But yeah, I, I don't have time to go into that, maybe, so I should probably ask her. So you, could do, you can get the generalization of Pan's result for uh, both connected and disconnected case, because in past result, if I remember correctly, this connectedness was important, and then it was generalized by other people to disconnect case. To yes, the, it should be with this with this language. That should also be possible, but one has to be a bit careful then. What the cobordism? This the cobordism has to induce some kind of compatibility of this Calabial structure. So that's somehow one can also ask what what is the DG when is the DG map between two Relative Calabial algebras or relative, yeah, two two DG algebras or relative Calabial if they satisfy this property. When, what what does it mean for, for a DG morphism to kind of be compatible with that in some sense? And I'm that I actually don't know with the full in full generality, but at least we have some kind of things that you can use. And when the cobordism is connected, maybe or not connected, but if it preserves the components in some way, then it. In, induces map on the fundamental class. If, if yeah, it, it's a bit technical. But... Thanks. So you, you need to be a bit careful. So, so which cobordisms do you consider and so on, and which coefficients, and what in, in which sense is the fundamental class there? Uh, 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 okay. So was it Chris? Maybe had his. You have uh, it right. Could you, could you go back to the the uh, unpublished result result with Paulo for just a second? Ah uh, yes. Uh, yeah, so in you know, first of all, like in in what generality do you expect this to be true? Like in higher dimensions for and then, and then the second question is, I mean, th this is the ring of functions on the augmentation variety. Uh, so it's the yes, that, that's that, that's another thing, of course, that yeah. the augmentation variety happens to be, I mean, since since this uh, since this algebra with the loop space coefficients is quasi-smorphic to this affine algebra, 
the, then kind of tautological of the augmentation variety is the pair of pants. Sometimes, um, sometimes H0 is not commutative, for instance. And then, then, then the augmentation variety becomes some kind of a finization of, of this H0 or something like that, or the, the spec of that. But, but yeah, that's, what, what to say? That, that's not supposed to be obvious from the definitions, right? That it's the ring of functions on the augmentation variety. It's, uh, or, or are you saying it is obvious? I'm kind of the definition of augmentation variety is, is something like, well, at, at least if I have to think about it, based on how this, the spec of H0, if you think about it as a commutative algebra, so H0. And do you expect it to be true more generally, like in, like in higher dimensions, for example, or? Uh, we, we were statement. So we, we have a kind of attempt at the computation of this also in high dimensions. Yeah. So so yes, there, there are there are such. And using this microlocal sheaf theory, this has been done a pretty long time ago by Nadler that he computed the partially wrapped Fukai category and uh, found that to be the higher dimensional pair of pants then. And, and then there, so there is a legendary that's kind of a generalization of this. It's it's an n n torus and it gives you the n minus one dimensional pair of pants as an augmentation variety. But he, did, so he didn't consider the Legendrian, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's there, it's there. I, 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 I don't know if he drew this picture, but, but uh -huh. this is the Legendrian at least. It's the same stop that okay. he's computing. Okay. And, and it's, uh, yes, yeah, so, so, so maybe, maybe it's not completely obvious to see it in the paper, but that's the Legendrian. But yes, I don't know if we claim, we maybe haven't done it in high dimensions, but, but it, yeah. it looks like the algebra should be the same somehow. The, mm. the, the difficulty here is may, mainly computing this quasi-smorphism, showing that the DG algebra is supported in, in degree zero only. That's mm. a bit, or in homology, that, that's a bit tricky actually. But anyway, I think we claim it in all dimensions. <laughs> I see, okay. Oh, thanks. I don't know who's up next. If someone to keep track of the questions. Uh, maybe, maybe on, on this, I think I saw in the chat first. So when you're on, uh, so since the fundamental class comes from the Clavial structure in topology, um, uh, yeah, the S1 structure, this I do not know. It's, it's uh, I never thought about this S1 structure in this setting. Uh, is, is that true? Does someone know if that is true in the, in the, in the absolute case? that I don't know that either if there's kind of if if the wine does someone know when when a Weinstein manifold the rat Fukai category has a kind of strong smooth clavial structure I had the impression that uh, Shio had a paper like a, a few years ago I mean after his week uh -huh. clavial paper that ex that discusses the S1 structure somehow but it doesn't show that it exists, or that it... was my impression. I, I, I mean, I, I probably need to double check to see what he proves. But yeah, I, then I, I need to read that. Discuss something like that. Okay. Yeah, you, you, you know more, you know probably more than I do. Anyway, <laughs> so that's I know very little about it. But it's a good, good point. Thanks. Uh, right. Maybe I don't know who was up next. Was it Hero? Maybe. Uh, sure, I'll go next. Georges, thank you very much for a great talk. Thank you, um, so this relative Calabial structure, it's the same thing as giving a map from a Lagrangian into a shifted symplectic manifold in the sense of derived geometry. Yes, I have heard that, but yeah, I don't fully understand it. But yes, I, <laughs> I heard those words. Right, um, so the, the thing that I want to point out is... Um, Let's say that I fixed a diffeomorphism class of capital lambda, and I embed it in two different, you know, boundaries of subcritical Weinstein's. Mm -hmm. uh, so your theorem exhibits two different relative Calabial structures related For to the same, same smooth, same smooth, same smooth lambda. You say exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so the the way to translate from relative Calabial to this derived symplectic setting, it's contravariant. So um, if I look at 
modules over the Chekhanov Eliochberg algebra. Mm -hmm. That's some derived stack. Mm -hmm. And if I look at modules over chains on the base loop space of lambda, that's another derived stack. Right. And the map from the Chekhanov Eliochberg thing. So modules over Chekhanov Eliochberg pull back now to modules over chains on the base loop by, by your algebra map. Yeah, 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 sure. Um, and so if I have two different you know, embeddings of lambda into a different, you know, boundaries of subcritical Weinstein's, mm. your work produces two different Lagrangians in the same shifted symplectic variety or stack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's incredibly natural to take their derived intersection and ask if there's an interpretation to this new shifted symplectic stack that you'd get from the intersection. Mm -hmm. um, you already mentioned that you're trying to penetrate the subject, but um, is there any expectation as to what this means? On well, this side, I mean, so now you're really taking two different symplectic manifolds. That's right. And uh, yeah, I mean, so it's somehow, but it's, it's, a, it's a very fancy version of somehow looking at augmentation varieties, different augmentation varieties. You kind of absolutely, right? absolutely. I mean, the point, I think like the work of Zaslow and Roger Casal, et cetera, they show that I think more or less the, the augmentation variety for sheaves is a Lejean, sorry, is a shifted Lagrangian inside of the uh, you know, mm. simple manifold called cha module local systems on capital lambda. So mm. you're exhibiting something incredibly similar, um, but it just occurred yeah, yeah. like, uh, on the side of geometry, you could take two different Weinstein boundaries, right? That is boundaries of subcritical Weinsteins. You have the same lambda embedded in each. I don't know if there's a geometric operation that you can yeah, do. It could, could be. That doesn't look like anything I ever saw or thought about, but yeah, it, it's. Uh... And and the, the end result would be a symplectic manifold of a potentially different dimension because the shifted derived stack that you'd get would be symplectic with a shift from the original thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. It, it, it spontaneously it sounds a bit like relevant in some qu quilted theories, but I don't know if you have a yeah, it, it could arise there maybe if you have two different embeddings and related in some way. Maybe you need to consider the intersection, the augmentations that come in intersection or something like that. Yeah, but I, I am speculating mostly. Okay. I think it's a, it's a nice idea for start to think about something like that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I think Philip is next. Hi, thanks a lot for the talk. I have just um, one question, and it is that for the a proof, for example, of echo met and uh, sublov. You need uh, you have the parallel copies construction and you to have to get the acyclicity of the cone and then uh, the uh, exact tri triangle. You have to have this uh, horizontal displaceability condition in your. Oh, yeah. in that your was very brief, sir. So I didn't really. Yeah, in your case with where you work with Miami, is there something like that? Do you also get restrictions or on the Legendrians that you work with? Yes, so, so but, but uh, so, the, the, so you, as I maybe didn't really have time to point out, but so if, if, if the cone of this is the Rabinovitz Fleur complex, so, so the cone of this is the Rabinovitz Fleur complex, that this map is a quasi-morphism is important, and that quasi-morphism comes from the fact that this cone is acyclic. And that's not always true. But this Rabinus Fleur complex is acyclic in the boundaries of subcritical Steinwatt manifolds. So that's the point. And well, to be honest, uh, the, the easier way to show this, and in the other cases, it's uh, more kind of, we have to work with cuborisms and somehow more complicated displacements. But, Remember this in the standard Darbu ball, every every Legendre is horizontally displaceable. So, so if, if I take this kind of two copy here, lambda zero, lambda one. Well, I compute the Rabinus Fleur complex by counting these differentials in this case, and I can just shift one of the copies off the other. Oh now, and I put myself in a position where I don't have space, but the Darbu ball is actually big enough for me to do, to do this. So I can, I can shift one off here. So here's still lambda zero maybe, and here's lambda one prime. I just shifted this 
off here. So so it's um, so so if so if, if I really move, move move this away, oops, then the complex becomes acyclic, and the invariance tells you that that uh, it is acyclic then. But okay, but this proof doesn't work in in a general boundary, but general subcritical. Th then you need to <clears throat> do something more, a bit more sophisticated. But yeah, in the ball, in the ball, it's this simple. And yeah, in, in in full generality, you need to assume assume something. That's uh, that is. So so when it's not true, for instance, to take a uh, take somehow. It's not satisfied, say, jet space of M, and then take inside here, take one jet of zero, and let's call this lambda. And, and then <clears throat> this lambda has, uh, sorry, this Chikonov Lashbury algebra of lambda with this base loop space coefficients of lambda. Well, this is just the base loop space of lambda itself. There are no chords. And of course, there's no natural way, if lambda is closed, there's no natural way to get a relative labial structure. Okay, you could have a trivial one, I guess. So it's an absolute labial structure. So maybe, yeah, I don't know if it illustrates something, but anyway, the, the Rabinian sphere complex is not a cyclic here. So that's maybe the punchline. <laughs> right, uh, other. Yeah, thanks a lot. Here, hopefully that answers the question. All the questions. Okay, I think if there are no other questions, let's thank George again for the beautiful talk.